Hello everyone. Welcome to the teaching show. I am Dr. Poonam Nigam and in this video we will be starting with our next uh, topic that is material balance involving chemical reactions. So uh, in this video I am going to give you an introduction to chemical reactions. Particularly I will be talking about what are limiting and excess reactants, how do you find which one is limiting and which one is in excess and then how do you calculate fractional conversion and extent of reaction. So let's get started. So uh, till now in my last uh, 16 or 17 odd lectures uh, I had dealt with all the concepts which you require for material balance without chemical reaction. So just a quick recap, a general balance equation takes the form of input plus generation minus output minus consumption is equal to accumulation. Now for um, steady state problems, accumulation term is zero and when you have no reaction then your generation and consumption term is zero so input is equal to output that was the form of equation which we were using till now for material balance problems without chemical reaction now with chemical reaction what happens is that um, when you are writing uh, uh, any component balance there is a possibility that because of reaction uh, some uh, component may get produced or get consumed okay so now generation and consumption terms are not zero and therefore they appear in your balance equation so now the balance equation takes the form of input plus generation minus consumption that is equal to output okay so uh, before starting uh, uh, any real problem solving any real problem i will quickly use it, uh, I will quickly get you familiar with all the uh, terminology which we are going to use. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about chemical reactions. So we all know that uh, stoichiometry that is basically a theory of the proportions in which chemical species combine with one another. This is a very uh, textbook kind of definition. So basically what we are trying to say is that different uh, atoms, they can combine in different proportions, okay, to give you different chemical species. Now how, in what proportions they combine to give you that specific chemical or specific molecule that is your study of stoichiometry okay now a stoichiometric equation is one which gives you how many molecules or how many of in what ratio these molecular species they combine to give you a different molecular species say for example i am giving you two molecules of hydrogen are combining with one molecule of oxygen to give you two molecules of water okay so this is a simplest form of uh, your stoichiometric equation now always when you write a stoichiometric equation it is always written in a balanced form just to maintain uh, what your fundamental uh, law that is uh, there is no uh, creation or loss of mass okay so atoms at the atomic level you have to conserve how many atoms are participating. They, they cannot be destroyed or created in a chemical reaction. Okay. So you will have to make sure that, okay, over here I have four atoms of hydrogen. So here also I should have four atoms of hydrogen. So the stoichiometric equation should always be written in a balanced form. Okay. Now, uh, what are stoichiometric coefficients? Whatever these numbers which are coming in front of these uh, molecular formula, these are known as uh, stoichiometric coefficients. If it is on the reactant side, then they carry a negative sign because reactants, they get consumed. So, um, stoichiometric coefficient of hydrogen is minus 2, that of oxygen is minus 1 and that of water is plus 2. Okay. Then let's see what is what do you mean by stoichiometric ratio. So when you have written a balanced chemical reaction or a balanced stoichiometric relation, then what do you have? You directly have that two moles of hydrogen will react with one mole of oxygen to give you two moles of water. Okay. So basically the stoichiometric ratio is the ratio of the stoichiometric coefficients of two molecular species 
which are participating in a reaction. So, uh, suppose I am writing moles of H2O generated uh, to moles of O2 consumed. Then that is equal to stoichiometric ratio of um, that is equal to the ratio of the stoichiometric coefficients of water and oxygen. It simply means that for each mole of hydrogen um, which is being consumed, one mole of water is being produced or similar way. So it can basically be used as a conversion factor. Okay. How it can be used as a conversion factor? Let's see in this problem. Okay. So I have this reaction in which C4H8 is combining with 6 molecules of oxygen to give me 4 molecules of carbon dioxide and 4 molecules of H2O. Okay. First of all, tell me, is this reaction balanced? Of course it is. You can check it. Okay. Now, what is the stoichiometric coefficient of CO2? So, quickly see what is the number uh, in front of CO2. That is 4. So, the stoichiometric coefficient of CO2 is 4. Now, uh, what is the stoichiometric ratio of water to oxygen? Then stoichiometric ratio is nothing but the ratio of its stoichiometric coefficients. So stoichiometric coefficient of water is 4. Stoichiometric coefficient of oxygen is 6. So the stoichiometric ratio is 4 by 6 that is 2 by 3. What it tells you is that uh, 4 moles of water will be generated for 6 moles of oxygen being consumed. Okay. How many moles of oxygen react to form 400 moles of CO2? Again, we are going to use stoichiometric ratio. So, I am going to write my stoichiometric ratio as moles of O2 consumed uh, divided by moles of CO2 generated. That will be equal to stoichiometric coefficient of oxygen divided, divided by stoichiometric coefficient of carbon dioxide that is 6 by 4 equal to 1.5. So, if I have to find out moles of O2 consumed, just take this on this side. So, 1.5 into moles of CO2 generated, that is 400. So, oxygen consumed will be 600 moles. So, if you know how much the other component is getting generated or produced, I can use these stoichiometric ratios to find out the um, similar information about other species. Okay. So, this much about the use of stoichiometric ratios. Now, Next question is 100 moles per minute of C4H8 is fed into a reactor and 50% reacts. At what rate is water formed? Okay. Now I have switched to flow rates now. Okay. Now it is saying 100 moles is entering per minute but only 50% is reacting. That means how much is reacting? Only 50 moles is reacting. So if I write now my stoichiometric ratio, it will be written something like this. Rate of generation of H2O upon rate of consumption of C4H8. Again, it will be the ratio of its stoichiometric coefficients. So 4 by 1 that is equal to 4. Now the rate at which uh, C4H8 is consumed that is equal to uh, 0.5 into 100 that is 50 moles per minute. So, I have to multiply 4 by the rate of consumption of C4H8 to get the rate of generation of water which is now 200 moles per minute. Okay. Now, another concept which comes into picture is stoichiometric proportion. What it says is that if the ratio of moles present of any two reactant species is equal to their stoichiometric ratio obtained from balanced equation, then the two species are said to be in stoichiometric proportion. Let's understand this with an example. Suppose uh, I have a reaction mixture in which I have 50 moles uh, of uh, C4H8 coming per minute and I have 300 moles of oxygen coming per minute. So then the actual ratio of C4H8 to oxygen in the uh, feed stream is 50 by 300 that is equal to 1 by 6. If I see the reaction then the ratio of the stoichiometric coefficients of C4H8 and oxygen are again 1 by 6. The ratio is 1 by 6. So if these two ratios whatever the actual ratio that is equal to your stoichiometric ratio then it is said that C4H8 is in stoichiometric proportion with oxygen. Okay, so if they are present in stoichiometric ratio, then they are said that they are in stoichiometric proportion. Okay, but uh, let's again see uh, another reaction. So, okay, I have C4H8, it combines with 6 molecules of oxygen. 
okay so i have six molecules of oxygen let's say that they are present in stoichiometric ratio okay or in stoichiometric proportion now um, whole of this will combine with all these six molecules so if this reaction goes to completion all of C4HA and all of oxygen will be consumed. But let's say if I have only 5 moles of oxygen, then at the end of the reaction, see if the reaction goes to completion, then at the end of the reaction, I will still have some amount of C4HA left while all of my oxygen will get consumed. Okay. So what is happening? Now the oxygen is present in a, a ratio. Let's see what is the ratio of oxygen to C4HA. It is 5 is to 1. But the stoichiometric proportion was 6 is to 1. Okay. So in this case, whatever the reactant which is present in an amount which is less than its stoichiometric ratio or its stoichiometric proportion, then that is known as your limiting reactant. Okay. And this is the reactant which will get which will be consumed first when the reaction goes to completion. Okay, so this is my limiting reactant. Let's again understand with one more example. Suppose I have one mole of C4H8. Now, uh, for the two reactants to be in stoichiometric proportion, how many moles of oxygen do I require? I require six moles of oxygen. But suppose I am now using nine moles of oxygen. Then what will happen if this reaction goes to completion? Then after completion, when whole of C4H8 is used, there are still three moles, moles of oxygen which are left. Okay. So now in this case, what is happening? C4H8 is getting consumed first. First, So it is being used. It is It gets finished first. So now this is my limiting reactant. Okay. And oxygen is already uh, is present. Okay. So this is my excess reactant. So whatever in the first case my C4H8 was excess reactant. In second case oxygen is the reactant is the excess reactant. Okay. So the textbook definition of limiting reactant is that a reactant is limiting if it is present in less than its stoichiometric proportion relative to every other reactant. I am seeing every other reactant just assuming that more than two reactants are taking part. Okay. So Two uh, things you have to remember. First of all, that your limiting reactant, it is present in, in less than its stoichiometric proportion. Say over here, your stoichiometric proportion was 6 is to 1, but oxygen was present in a ratio of 5 is to 1. Okay. Over here also, you can check that your uh, excess reactant, it is present in the ratio of 9 is to 1. Stoichiometric requirement was 6 is to 1. So, it is it is more than what is required stoichiometrically. So, O2 is in excess. Okay. Now, let's see. So, O2 present is actually 9 moles and stoichiometric requirement was only 6 moles. Okay. So, you have an excess of 3 moles. This brings us to another concept of fractional excess and percentage excess. Okay. So, let's... Uh, take back that uh, problem again or that example again. So, my stoichiometric requirement was 6 moles and I was using 3 moles in excess. So, fractional excess is defined as the excess amount divided by the stoichiometric requirement. That is the number of moles fed minus the stoichiometric requirement divided by the stoichiometric requirement. So, I'm, I was using 9 moles of oxygen, but the stoichi stoichiometric requirement was 6 moles. So, 9 minus 6, that gives me the excess moles divided by the stoichiometric requirement, that is 6 moles. So, it gives me 0.5. If I multiply this by, with 100, then it gives me percentage excess, that is 50% now. So, in numerical problems, you will often see that in combustion problems, they say that oxygen is used in 25% uh, in excess or 50% in excess. So, you know now, uh, if you have the reaction, you can calculate how much moles of oxygen is being fed. Okay. Now, uh, there is one more concept which is fractional conversion. Not all reactions proceed to completion. Uh, even if you are using one of the reactant in limiting case, that limiting reactant, uh, still it doesn't get consumed. So, fractional conversion is now defined as ratio of moles reacted to moles fed. So, F is the fractional conversion. So, 1 minus F will give you fraction unreacted. So, percentage conversion again it is obtained by multiplying F with 100. Let's take an example. If 20 moles of a reactant is fed and percentage conversion is 80%, then 
moles reacted will be equal to 0.8 into 20 that is 16 moles and moles unreacted will be uh, 4 moles so thanks for watching and uh, please uh, like my channel or subscribe